All right, guys, we're here talking about board breaking, and really we're gonna try to troubleshoot some board breaks. So there's a couple common things that are universal through any board breaking you're due. Um, there's about nine or 10 of them, so we're gonna go over those one by one and just talk about them. And then as you start watching the other board breaks, if you're having issues, you're gonna wanna come back and reference this video and really start digesting some of these nine or 10 and start thinking about, okay, am I doing that right? Am I doing this right? So number one is gonna be distance. As you set up for your board, you wanna make sure that my distance is correct. I wanna be able to go to about three quarters to seven eighths full extension, and then as I'm hitting the board, I'm pushing that last little bit through. If I'm too close, you're gonna find that you're jamming yourself and you're, and you're gonna end up falling back from the board or you're just not gonna be able to penetrate through the board because you're too close. Likewise, if you're too far, you're gonna to get to full extension and then you're gonna have no power to push through the board. So you're just gonna tap it and you're not gonna have any follow through. So that's gonna be very important that you understand the distance as you go. Second thing is gonna be trajectory, where you're striking. Sometimes like if I'm doing a punch, I wanna make sure my joints are reinforcing joints. If I'm doing a side kick, my knee is reinforcing my ankle, so on and so forth. Sometimes if I'm kicking up like this and my technique needs to go this way, this trajectory is off. It's not gonna be able to penetrate through the board. So that's very important that I'm making sure that where I'm striking to is going in the direction I need to to break the board. Number three is gonna be our follow through, which includes your speed and your power. So making sure that when you're making the attempt on the board, I'm not aiming at the board, I'm aiming behind the board. So my target is really six inches behind the board and that's what I'm trying to reach. And then I need to make sure that I'm following through and I'm trying to strike it hard and fast. If I'm not striking hard and fast, I'm not gonna have enough power and a lot of times you'll see, like you'll, you'll start slowing down or you're just not gonna continue through it. So that's gonna be very important that I'm following through the board. And we'll talk about this a little bit more at a later step on mentality and attitude. Number four, rotation. So you wanna have rotation in your wrist, that's gonna give you power. So making sure I'm twisting there in my hips, um, in, my, in my, making sure that I'm really twisting because that's gonna give me a little extra power to get through the target with that, with that technique. So really make sure you have rotation as much as you can in what technique you're delivering from. Number five is eye contact. Spot your target. Most of people aren't ready for a more advanced technique, which is a no-look technique or a blindfolded technique because they don't have the, the, the repetition of the technique. So you need to make sure that my eyes are on the target. The worst thing you can do is start doing a technique and your eyes look to the ground or you look up or you look at mom and dad or you look somewhere else and you've now taken your eye off the target, you don't know where you're kicking. So a lot of times you're gonna be kicking high or you're gonna be kicking low and you're not gonna hit on the, on the space where you need to hit in order to deliver, deliver the most effective technique. So eye contact is number five. Number six, proper technique. Making sure whatever I'm doing, part of proper technique is making sure I'm hitting with the correct spot. So if I'm doing a hammer fist, I'm hitting with my actual tight part right here in my hand. If I'm doing a punch, I'm hitting with my two big knuckles. If I'm doing a knife hand strike here, if I'm doing a front kick, it's the ball of my foot. If I'm doing a side kick, it's the heel of my foot. Trying to get the proper point to hit the target. There's a big difference when you hit improperly and you hit properly as far as transferring your power and really making sure that that technique is delivering to maximum efficiency. So make sure that's well, as well as your chamber kick rechambers or making sure your hips are turning, that kind of encompasses those things as well. Number seven, body alignment, which we just talked about that. You know, making sure joints are reinforcing joints. If I'm going to punch and I'm doing this, you're breaking your hand. Okay, or if I'm going like this, I'm gonna break my wrist. It's gonna hurt a lot. If I'm going to do a front kick and I don't chamber kick rechamber, I don't have my hip following through, I'm not gonna get that power. So making sure that I have that correct body alignment so that I have the force to reinforce the technique. Number eight, yelling. Okay, yelling, and this kind of goes into number nine, which is your mentality. Yells help you, especially when you're nervous about breaking boards. If you are nervous and you're thinking about oh, this is gonna hurt, or this is not gonna feel good, or I don't know if I can do this. You're not gonna have power, you're not gonna have speed, you're not gonna have follow through, you're not gonna make the best attempt you can. But when you yell, that takes your mentality away from, oh, this is gonna hurt, to, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit this thing as hard as I can, and I'm not thinking about the pain, I'm thinking about the success. And that's what I need to have. I need to be thinking about the success, 
not the paint. Because the second I start thinking about that, and you can see it all the time, you'll start really fast, and then right before you make impact with the board, you'll pull back or you won't follow through. Okay, so that helps you, and that goes into your mentality. Sometimes you might need to get a little angry. If, if you can get intense all by yourself, that's awesome. Sometimes you might need to have a visualization picture for you. Maybe it's your brother and sister who made you mad. Maybe it's mom or dad who sent you to time out or they took you, whatever. They grounded you for some reason that was unfair. Maybe it's a teacher who you just can't stand. Whatever it is, get that picture of that mentality of that, of that anger and access that. Because at board breaking, that's what we need. We need that intensity. We need that anger so that we're following through and we're really doing our best. So these are going to be kind of your common causes that if you're, if you're not breaking your board, more likely than not is one of these things. So it may be a lot of them. It may be more than one thing. So you may have to go back and you may have to adjust two or three things. And sometimes it maybe just is one thing. Maybe you're just not yelling. The proper technique there, the follows throughs there, you know, everything where your technique is, is where it needs to be. You're just not yelling to get that last technique. So really study these, watch over these. I'll make sure in the bottom, I put a description of all these so you can look down there but make sure you understand the techniques. And then of course, you know, it is very hard to kind of self adjust that. So refer back to your instructor, make sure you ask, you know, ask either an instructor or another high ranking student that you know has really good technique, is really successful in this. Ask them to kind of watch your technique. Maybe you want to put it in slow motion and, and watch it on a video so you can self adjust it and then make the adjustments yourself. Good luck with that, train hard, and remember become better than you are today.